reputation. I see. Uh, could we see an example of something you would call military incapacitation? Well, uh, perhaps a good illustration would be uh, Private Green. He's a 25-year-old married PFC uh, with one year of college, and he's been trained in computer work. Here's a uh, scene showing how he performed uh, sentry duty less than an hour after exposure. Halt! Who goes there? Advance, Sergeant. Halt! You have a security badge, Sergeant? You have an ID card, Sergeant? Yes, I do. Did you place it on the ground? I'll take about four paces back. At uh, four hours, there's certainly quite a contrast here. Uh, notice how he fails the mask when a smoke grenade is tossed in front of his foxhole. Here we are, one hour later, uh, that would be five hours, as he's walking to his sentry duty. What the password is? I think we'd hard to see if he's even How far out do you stop him? At this point, the sergeant is giving him complete instructions on his sentry duty, uh, how to challenge individuals approaching the gate, uh, what to do with strange vehicles, or if there's an explosion or a fire in the uh, vicinity near his sentry post. He's uh, so disoriented here that he completely ignores these instructions and he leaves his post unattended. What causes this? What does this agent do to the man? Well, from the standpoint of the individual, the effects are really quite varied. Here are some of the comments of the men themselves. No, it may be weak. You feel weak? Yeah, and not uh, complete control. You, you felt like you were twitching since for the last half hour or so. My legs, legs were twisting. I felt like I was tied up in the knot in my stomach. Felt like you were tied up in the knot in your stomach. You got a silhouette builder there. Right? Silhouette builder. I think now you'd be able to sort mail if someone had you sorting mail. No, I don't think so. What would be the, What would be your biggest trouble if you had to sort mail now? Do you think? Well, seeing the addresses on. Them. Seeing the addresses on them. Hmm? Can't what? Talk. Talk. Can't make the words come out. It, is your throat? Uh, have anything to do with that? Maybe it's real dry. I see. Bex, uh, do you notice it in present time? Well, uh, it's just a little hard to walk. Yeah. I feel like I have to stretch to feel my muscles. So I say, oh, box. The muscles are like so I feel weak. I feel like one of those dolls where you let go of your string. Long yes, sir. There seems to be several things apparent. First of all, I had trouble walking. Uh, seemed to have a little stagger. My reflexes, something seems to be wrong inside. I, I feel uh, a sensation, something like being sleepy. Uh, vision doesn't exactly fade out, but it, focus comes and goes at times on the tracking machine. It's hard to, to keep focused on what I was doing. Just off. Jack, what is it that's bothering you the most right now? Uh, seems to me that my legs are a little numb. Your legs are numb? Yeah. Do you have trouble walking when you've gone outside? Do you notice you have difficulty walking? A little bit. And what about your mind? Do you feel that your mind is perfectly clear yeah, when you do the Texas batteries or you do all right? I, I feel like it's... Uh, my mind thinks faster. I put my hands on the correspondence. Your hands are what? They don't correspond to my mind. Are your hands? Uh, a little bit of grogginess or sleeping. In some effect, it's sort of a hard thing to describe. You just feel sort of lying. This is the sensation in your head you were talking about. Yes, sir. It's a little hard to walk. Yeah. 
Uh, I noticed your eyes are a little bit uh, uh, bloodshot. Uh, do you have any, any yes, visual sir. symptoms? It, uh, vision seems to come and go. It's hard to keep your eyes focused. It seems uh -huh. to bounce, yes, it's a little difficult to walk. Uh, it seemed like it was a lot of balance, the pillow, or the better be. The better pillow didn't... Either one, it just seemed like it was rocking and left. Mm -hmm. well, I know it wasn't, but it felt that way. Yeah. It felt like it was rocking. Is there anything else bothering you? No? Well, just the fact that I couldn't communicate again. How did you know? Now, uh, from the standpoint of the uh, uh, observer, such things as staggering and restlessness were very conspicuous. Besides the, the obvious restlessness, which is clearly evident in this man, he showed the most definite changes in his neurologic status with many abnormal reflexes, compatible with, with what we call a, uh, oh, a toxic brain syndrome. No matter what uh, position the man seems to assume, they just never really seem to get very comfortable. You can see it again in this scene, how uncomfortable he seems to be. They also seem to have some difficulty with uh, performing rapid movements, as you can see in the next scene. Can you do it a little faster there? How fast as I can go, sir. Okay. Certainly, uh, visual blurring was one of their most persistent symptoms. And uh, the men also had trouble with slurred speech, uh, something like the, oh, the uh, effect from alcohol, for instance. I need to be uh, stressed in the morning, you know what I mean? It's kind of tight, tight. Jack, could you, could you uh, give me your, your full name and your serial number? Jack Alvarez. Serial number is US 560 Okay. Uh, some of the mental effects included drowsiness and uh, sedation. And there are also a great deal of uh, difficulty with calculation, memory, and their, oh, their uh, sense of time. <laughs> How's your eye? That was six, nine, three, eighty-six. Ninety, there's seventy-nine, seventy-six, sixty-nine. Well, now, uh, what's uh, twelve times eleven? Twelve times eleven. What did I just ask? 223, I heard. 223? Yeah. What, what did I ask you? Uh, how big is the tent? Hmm? How big the tent is? How big the tent is? And is that how big it is? No. What answer did you give me? Uh, the iron plug is to move from a flashlight. Hey, I want to give you uh, some words to remember, and you, and you see if you can remember them. I'll ask them to you again in a few minutes, all right? Remember table? and red and 42 Broadway. Do you recall what those three words were I asked you to remember? You just... I recall yours. I think I recall his. Uh... You recall what? I'm sorry. His. His what? His words. What were his words? Divide by nine and go down. Or run, divide by seven and start at nine and nine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Come around one or twelve, I mean. Twelve. It's a little later than that, actually. It's uh, after three. And one? Oh, gee, I can't believe that. Can't believe that? Yeah. I think it is now army time. My watch does us for that. What does your watch say? Is it? Okay, what day of the week is it? Saturday. Saturday? Uh, you sure. No. <clears throat> You're Wednesday. Now, uh, here are some typical signs of early delirium, uh, looking for non-existent objects and confusing the identity of simple ones. For what? For wire. Wire? Yeah. Oh. What did, uh, was there something you wanted to do with that? 
I don't know. Here, what's your uh, home address? 1433 Wilson. Wilson, uh huh. <laughs> what do you What do you think that was? You were You were looking for a match a while back. Is that right? Was that right? Uh -huh. Oh, this kind of match. Yeah. Like this, I can hear you know, mm -hmm. Two eighty-five, seventy, or sixty. Yeah, seventy. Uh, notice how he loses his train of thought here. 57 uh, squad, squad, is there? Mm -hmm. That yellow stuff. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, there wasn't too much happening for the first two days of school for that. I didn't know anybody, except mm -hmm. study and things like that. Mm -hmm. Where was this now? What school? You University of Utah. University of Utah. You <laughs> he seems to be having some trouble. Yes, he certainly is. There are uh, several uh, scenes here which show how the performance is uh, hindered by poor coordination. I think you caught a uh, glimpse of some of these scenes earlier where the man staggers as he's walking up to the sentry gate. I'm with you now. Hey, yeah. Sergeant of the Guard. Sergeant of the Guard. Huh? Sergeant of the Guard. Uh, we got a helicopter approaching the dead center. It uh, turns out to be a private. I that. I uh, want our own. Sorry, God. Now that, Sorry, God. That uh, plane uh, threw out a uh, chemical gas, and he was very clumsy in uh, getting on his mask. Uh, uh, even though he knows what to do, he seems to have trouble keeping the mask on, and uh, he's trying to write a note right here describing what's just happened. This subject was unable to do more than just mumble fire, and he completely forgot the ring the gong as he'd been instructed to just a few minutes before. And uh, here's a case of blurred vision causing problems. I can't get, I can't see the numbers on the compass. It's, uh... Again, slurred speech was certainly evident in these phone conversations from the foxhole. Sorry, the guard. Oh, this is Specialist Court. Uh, po er, um, at, uh, the old people, right? Is the sound bad on his mic? No, his, uh, his speech is really that bad. It's almost too thick to make out at times. Now, what kind of a shot is this man getting? Oh, we uh, treated many of the men when they'd reached the uh, peak effect. Oh, I didn't know there was anything available to treat this. Well, uh, yes, there is. This is uh, physostigmine, which is a short-acting anticholinesterase. Uh, watch what uh, happens in the next scene here, which is just a few minutes after the injection. His performance had been completely zero prior to treatment. Now here he is, uh, drinking a glass of water. Uh, he's the man we saw earlier who walked away from the sentry post, uh, was unable to perform his sentry duties normally. Sergeant of the Guard. 
This side, there were six enemy, six enemy soldiers coming this way, then they went back. Six? They fired some rounds and went back. About how many rounds? And uh, uh, here's another subject, just prior to therapy. This is a, a week Sunday. Your week Sunday. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Population of what? Oh, 25,000. What population of what? I didn't... People. Uh, where? In the... Uh, well, on their membership files. On the membership files? Well, actually, you pick up your envelope there. Mm -hmm. Actually, deposit in the uh, mailbox, and that way you have a reserve on hand all the time. A reserve on hand of what? Okay. What those oxygen tanks, is it? Uh, oxygen tanks? I'll, I want you to try subtracting seven from a hundred for me and just subtracting seven from each number. Can you do okay. that? Okay. The uh, 93, 85, okay, 93. And this thing. Uh, what was that question again? I want you to subtract 7 from oh, that's 100, right. right? Okay. 7 from 193, 85, 85, 78, 71, uh, 31 off the left. Does everybody have a pass? I didn't, I didn't think to check that. Does everybody have a pass? Yeah, on this list, yeah. I guess it has to right in here. Did they ask you to check for the passes, or? No, I mean, he, well, he just said to find out identification he had on it. Mm -hmm. And now here he is following the injection. Now I'm going to give you three words to remember. Would you, uh, do you, you try to remember them, and I'll ask you these words later on, all right? Okay. Fork, purple, and Highway 90, okay? Okay. All right. Subtract uh, 7 from 99 and then subtract 7 from that and just go on down. Let's see, uh, 99, 72, 85, 50, 43, 35, 27, 20, 13. Okay, that's fine. That's, that's real good. Now, can you uh, tell me those three words I asked you to remember? Purple, fork, and highway 90. Very good. Uh, how do you feel now compared to, say, earlier in the day? Oh, I feel a lot better. Much better. Can you remember uh, how you felt a few hours ago? I sure can. What was it? Was it? Was there anything that bothered you? Did you feel uncomfortable at any time? Actually, uh, it's hard to explain, but it seemed like I had a, a tingling and a slight aching on my legs in my leg. I couldn't get rid of it. And actually, when she gave me the shot, I don't even remember giving me the shot. I don't remember giving the shot. Uh, how about your uh, uh, thinking, though? Your concentration and uh, how you're able to figure out your problems and so forth. Did you find you had a lot of trouble? With very, that? very much so. I, uh, on those uh, Texas uh, exams, what do they call them? Texas batteries. Texas batteries. I had a difficult time. I answer, I get one of them and in my mind it seemed to wander off somewhere else and I just sat there. I didn't even know where I was at. And pretty soon somebody had been led to me. Now, let's look at just one more subject. Uh, you may recall this man from our earlier discussion. He was the one that was the most restless, confused, and really agitated of all the subjects. It was calculated that he'd receive the uh, highest CT of all the men. And now here's the same man about 10 minutes after receiving a single injection of physostigmine. Dave, can you sit up a minute? Go ahead. How you feeling now? How are you feeling? Man? Sit up on the edge of the bed a minute. Just put your feet down here. Do you feel a little better now? Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Uh, here we are about uh, 40 minutes later. 
Does one shot last very long? No, the subject must receive the medication every one to two hours, either by injection or by mouth, and for as long as a BZ Fecta lasts. What happens if the medicine stopped? Well, their performance really falls quite rapidly. As you can see in this subject, about uh, four hours after we stopped all therapy. Uh, can you subtract seven from 100 for me and keep going? I've done this before now. Subtract seven from 100 and then subtract seven from that number. All right, 69, 62, 50, uh, 5, 43, uh, 40, uh, Kalen Jagger should have more room to work in him because he's pretty well blocked up by all the equipment now. Who, who's that that's blocked up? He's not blocked up now, he won. Who was that? That's uh, 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 No, uh, here he is again after we had reinstituted therapy. Yes, sir. Uh, on these uh, Texas battery tests, I before that time I could read the letters without using glasses, the special glasses the Army Service gives us. But after about an hour or so after that time, I couldn't read the letters without glasses. They were always blurred, no matter where I positioned my head. And uh, how about your thinking? Did you did you think you were confused at all then, or had any trouble thinking or concentrating? Uh, it was twice I was confused, and that's when you asked me. You gave me something to remember later on. Mm -hmm. When you asked me, I was a blank. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, this, he, exactly the same thing uh, happened to this man. This is the one we saw before who had done so well after Physostigmine. Here he is a few hours after therapy had stopped. 28. No, that would be 28. 27. And se uh, 7 minus that would be 20. And then it would be 13. And then... Uh, 13 minus 7 would be 3. 3? I mean, 13, uh, 10 minus 7 would be 3 days. Right? 3 days? Yeah. Oh, are you counting days now? On well, you day? told me to count backwards from 101. Yeah, right. Took a little bit of time. How'd you get in with the days there at the end? Oh, I see. You can just numbers. Yeah, right. Now, in this scene, the uh, doctor is asking him to write the, uh, the alphabet backwards, starting at Z. This treatment doesn't seem very practical. Well, it's, it's not when you think in the terms of mass exposures. There are longer acting drugs in the development stage right now, which we think may prove more feasible. Well, doctor, all things considered, do you think the agent was very effective being disseminated in the field this way? Well, perhaps the comments of the men themselves will answer this question. These are scenes from an interview conducted after the uh, effect of the agent had worn off. Agent, but nobody tell me anything, but it was classic on fire. But uh, as far as experiencing it and the symptoms, uh, there was time there, probably a period of eight hours, I didn't even know where I was at. I woke up and somebody said it was 5.30 and I thought it was in the morning. I think uh, it would have happened to you if you'd been trying to perform as a medic. Well, excuse me. I'm afraid it'd be disastrous if you're, especially right up on the front line. Because you've got to remember, 
usually there's two with you, a letter carrying team, and you rely on each other to send back your messages, which are only by hand signal. And then if you forget all these tactics and techniques that were taught you in basic, you uh, wouldn't live very long. You stand up and start running. Or what, more or less incompetence. You, uh, your mind has a tendency to wander, no matter what you're doing. You, you start out doing it with um, a normal feeling. And before you know it, you find yourself gazing at the walls and just losing complete interest. Else, uh, impress me with the, uh, the total incompetence of one soldier. I went out there, I couldn't uh, talk. It seemed like you were just whispering, just blaring out as hard as you could, but you were just whispering. And my eyes were so tired that I thought I just about fell asleep out of the foxhole. I feel it's very effective, sir, because uh, I'm fairly sure there was about two hours I didn't know even what, what was going on. And I didn't even know until after I got the first shot, you know, to the antidote before I was in, even knew I was here. I think it's very effective. What was your uh, opinion of the treatment? Did you feel it was effective? And uh, are there any comments you'd like to make? Well, I felt it was very effective. I. Uh, I remember going to sleep. You know, I woke up and I said, well, this isn't bad at all. I must have slept through the whole thing. Well, I didn't even know I even got it. I think about when I got the second one, I found that I already had one. And uh, within a very short period of time, where you're not, not back to normal, but you're able to function much better. <clears throat> the other two received shots, and I received it orally. Uh, at first, I thought perhaps the oil wasn't working the way it should because these two guys were up running around. I was still out like a light on them. But um, it seemed to me that uh, the shots were working beautifully as long as they were kept up. And then toward the end of it, where we were beginning to slack off in our antidote being given to us, uh, it seemed that these two sort of, as soon as they took it away, they went back into approaching the state they were in before. Not completely, but. Yeah, felt dizzy, nausea, and things like this. These were our soldiers who went out to the desert to meet and assess a cloud. They waited for it as it drifted half a mile across an instrumented network of yardsticks and stopwatches. They breathed it by the numbers into calibrated lung spaces. Willingly, they chose to play the role of standard, unsuspecting targets deliberately kept close to the normal average so that their responses might provide predictions for the thousands of normal average soldiers of whom they constituted merely a sample. Draw a milligram of the cloud into the lungs and the inexorable progress of dullness and intoxication is ready to begin, culminating in total disability within a few hours. Will a wind on some other desert someday carry this cloud toward our troops, our citizens, our friends, will it find them unsuspecting and unprepared? Or will something be learned from this cooperative encounter with the cloud that causes confusion?